Hello all, how are we? All well here. We've had a couple of uh, quite nice weeks here and I have been quite productive. I have made two dresses, a skirt and I've finished off two jumpers. I haven't started the jumpers in the last two weeks. I have finished them, but I'll come to that and I'll show you sort of later on. So what I was planning with this vlog is I'm going to show you the sewing first, then I'll show you some knitted bits and pieces. And then at the end, I'm just going to give you a bit of life updates and, and what we've got up to during the week and just pop some pictures in so you can see what we've been doing. So we'll start off with the Style Arc Yvette pattern on the lovely Mabel here, who's probably going to fight with me yet again. There we go, you see it? I asked you for last week for your um, thoughts on the two fabrics I had for this dress. So there was this fabric and then there was the one with the bigger stripes. And if most of you, if not all, said that you preferred the um, fabric with the bigger stripe, I completely agree with you but I thought this is the first time I have ever made a style art pattern. It's the first time I've made this dress. If I had enough of this fabric to try and make a toile out of, I would have a go because this was the less expensive fabric of the two. And I'm really glad I did actually. I had just about enough. I didn't have enough to put the pockets in and I had to reduce the length of the sleeves by about three inches. Um, and there is a band that goes around the bottom of the sleeves that I had to miss out as well. But I managed to get it out of the rest of it. With this pattern, most of it is cut on the flat. So you can sort of manipulate it a little bit. With, in terms of sort of cutting the pattern out, I did find it a little confusing because it, it's, the pattern pieces themselves show you, um, they don't show you the top of the pat the top of the actual pattern piece. They show you the direction of the stripe. So I had to sort of look at those and it, it says on it, PP3. And I'm thinking, what on earth does PP3 mean? Mm -hmm. Pattern P3, Andrea. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> it took me a moment. Um, but the actual instructions themselves show you the pieces sort of put together. Uh, and once you've sort of looked at that, it does make sense. And I did my usual, jumped in without reading the instructions properly and then had to go back and have a look at them and read them in full. Once I'd done that, it made a lot more sense. There is, the instructions themselves are quite concise. So it's sort of numbered points um, and then you've got the, the diagram of the pattern pieces going together. But there is a pictorial tutorial, I'm saying that, uh, that goes along with this one. Um, so if you just search for it, it'll, it'll come up. Uh, that was quite useful. The only slightly head scratchy part I found was putting, uh, joining the um, facing at the back of the neck, but I just did my own thing with that and it sits fine. I probably didn't read the instructions fully in all fairness. Um, so it came together quite well. However, I am really glad that I made the toile because when I tried it on, it was way too big, way too big. I cut out the size 18. Now the finished bust uh, measurement on a size 18 is 40, she says looking over there, 18, 45 and 5 eighths. I'm about 41, 39 uh, high bust and about 41 full. But I wanted a bit of ease in it, but I went far, to, and, and I stuck to the seam allowance rigidly, but it, it was too much ease for me. So measuring it now, because I've made some alterations to it, sorry, I've got something on my lip. Measuring it now, it's really toothpaste. Um, it's coming out at about 40, 21, 40, 42, about 42 inches. Now the finished measurement on the 14 is 41 and three quarters. And on the 16, it's 43 and three quarters. So I'd either have to go for the 14 and re change the seam allowance or re do a smaller seam allowance or go for the 16 and increase the seam allowance or grade between the two. Probably adjusting the seam allowances might, might be a bit easier. Um, so yeah, I will, I want to make it again. Um, 
and I think I'm going to use the other fabric that I've got, pointy fingers out, I'm going to use the other fabric I've got with the bigger stripes in it. So you've got, it's, it's cut out, the, the bodice piece is quite strange because it, you cut it out sort of on the slant because you can see the stripes, you cut it out in the direction of the stripes. So you position the pattern piece following the direction of the stripes, if that makes sense. So the, the front bodice part has darts in it, stripes go this way, and then you've got a skirt piece, stripes go that way, and then another skirt piece, the stripes go that way, and then a bottom skirt piece, stripes go that way. And then at the back, you've got the two back pieces, and the stripes are almost matching. And then you've got a two section for the skirt at the bottom, stripes going that way, and then that way. So I really like that button closure at the back. Sorry, Mabel, manhandling you again with just like a little rouleau loop made out of fabric. And you can either make this without sleeves or with sleeves. I prefer it with sleeves. Um, and like I say, I cut about three. I didn't want because the full length sleeve comes to a, down to about here. I didn't want the full length sleeve. So that was I didn't have enough fabric for the full length sleeve. But so I cut about three inches off that. But you've still got like a little inverted pleat at the top there. So, yeah, quite pleased with it. The weather at the moment is looking reasonably OK. So I'm hoping to get outside and take some pictures for you. But that's the, my style arc. Um, I think that's about it on that one. Yeah. Ah, when I was, so after I'd made it, <laughs> after I'd made it uh, and tried it on, I thought, no, it's too big. So I had to go in, I took about an inch out of either side and then I had to reposition the darts. Um, this one's looking a little bit wonky, but... There we go. So I went in, repositioned the darts, sewed it back up, um, and there we go. So that's my style arc, Yvette. And this week I found an indigo, Tilly and the Buttons indigo dress that I had made probably about at least 18 months ago. Was it last summer or the summer before, maybe? And I'd never worn it, so I dragged it out gave it a good iron and wore it to work and really enjoyed wearing it. So I thought I'll make another one. So I'm going to put it on Mabel in a second and uh, show you that one. Bear with me a second. Oh, before you ask, <laughs> always forget this. I am wearing one of my very favourite dresses. Um, if you've been with me for a little while, you'll know that this is a Shelby and I have made six of these. It's my favourite pattern and I am currently got another one on the cutting board that I am making up which I'll show you next time. So bear with me a second, uh, let me put the indigo on Mabel. One moment, uh, my clicky thing is not working so I'm having to rely, this thing, so I'm having to rely on my watch and I can never find the thing. Right, hang on a second. So here we go, uh, this is the Tilly and the Buttons Indigo, not Mabel. If <laughs> Mabel's wearing it, it's the indigo pattern from Tilly and the Buttons. I have made a size seven in this. It is a little big. However, I will hold my hands up because I could not be bothered reprinting the pattern and cutting it out in a smaller size. So what I thought is I wanted it fairly loose anyway and I'll add some back ties to it just to cinch it in a little bit. They're just a simple, um, I, in fact I've used the ties from this dress from the Shelby but you don't need a pattern for it, just cut out two pieces of fabric and um, just make some little ties. If you do, when you attach them, attach them to the sides before you put the skirt on, otherwise you'll have to undo the sides. Uh, <laughs> Yes, uh, it has got pockets, pockets on both sides. There is a, a frill around the bottom. And yeah. Oh, I did go with this one. This, there are, there is an expansion pack or an add-on pack that you can get with this pattern, which gives you the option of making a buttoned up 
back, which I quite like. I'm not sure if you can see it on this one very well. Some buttons here and here. And they are proper buttons. I haven't cheated. I've done buttonholes and everything. Um, just because I like that extra detail on the back of it. But you don't have to do that. You can just go for a plain back with it. And I did add on the little frills on the sleeves. The first one I made had a full length sleeve, but I thought I'll go for the shorter one with this one and add the frill to it, which I have doubled. So you just cut it out. Instead of cutting it out twice, cut it out four times, sew it together, and then you don't see the reverse of the fabric when your little sleeves are flapping. So yeah, really pleased with that one. That will do for work. Now this fabric was the one that I showed you that I got from Dalston, I think it is, Mill, that was £2.20 a metre. It did take all three metres and there wasn't a great deal left over, um, but that's £6.60 for the dress. Probably one of the least expensive ones I have made in a long time. So that was the indigo brain fade this morning right there we go with that one no issues putting that together at all like I say I have made that one before and Tilly and the Buttons patterns are completely different to style arc in that they are um very hold your hand throughout the whole pattern pretty much I'm, I'm looking around there because the skirt's over there so the skirt, I decided to revisit a pattern that I made when I first started sewing, which was this one. And it's the Butterick, you grab it. 4686. I'm not sure if you can get this anymore. Um, it might be out of print, but there's a McCall's one, I believe. If I can find it, I'll put it down below that is very similar. But what I liked about this one, if you can see from the line drawings at the back, it's got quite a wide band across the top, which I find helps to suck things in. Um, so it's got the band at the top. It has actually got some pockets in it. The original pattern doesn't have pockets in this one. This I... When I first started sewing, I was watching Anita by design. I'll try and link it in the description box below. And she was doing a learn to sew. And I think it's still, you can still available, I think, and free. Um, but you'll need the pattern to go along with it. But I followed her step by step to create my very first skirt. Um, it's got an invisible zip in the back and she adds pockets in at either side, on there, on there. And I was super pleased with it when I finished it. When I look at it now, it's um, not finished off inside properly. I'll show you. I have actually pinned this down because I'm going to fix this. Uh, but you can see the side back seam isn't finished off, the pockets, I haven't been finished off. I've pinked the top of this here, um, but haven't actually sewn it down. <laughs> so that needs finishing off. But other than that, I was really, really pleased with it. So I thought, do you know what? I'm gonna have another go at making that. So we popped into Truro Fabrics this week and I picked up this one. Andrew says this looks like Pac-Man. What do you think? It's all right. Now I have done with this. When I got the pattern out, I thought with the original one, I thought it's a little bit, it, it just sort of hits me at not quite the right length. Um, and I know that there are two lengths with it, but when I had originally cut it out, I cut into the into the pattern piece itself and I must have thrown away the, the extra bit that goes on the bottom of it. So I had to remake uh, or re-put that back on and I just measured um, three inches from the end of the original pattern piece just to extend the length of this one. So I've extended the length of this one by three inches and this one has been finished off on the inside as well. And the waist and the yokes are sewn down. So yeah, I'm really pleased with that one, with this one. Now we're going away in a couple of, no, next, next weekend actually, we're going to London for the weekend. And I thought I've got 
the reason I made that is I was thinking white top, skirt, pumps, denim jacket maybe. And I thought I've got a white knitted, I'm going into the knitting bit now, um, a white knitted top that I made last summer that I haven't worn yet because I made it towards the end of the summer, which is the Sea Haven. Can't remember the designer. I'm going to have to put it on the screen. Sea Haven top, which I made in this. And this is Sanders Garn tin liner and it's held double. And it's just a little simple white top. It's got a few creases in it, but we'll, we can get rid of those. The one thing with this is that I need to go and fix. There's a bit of a theme going on in this in this vlog. Is one sleeve I have bound it off using the pretty sure it's the sewn where you sew. It's the Italian sewn bind off, and I've pulled it a little bit too tight on one sleeve. So I need to go back in and just loosen that off. I have blocked it. I have tried washing it. I have tried pulling it out a bit but it is a little bit too tight on that sleeve. The other sleeve is absolutely fine. I don't know if you can see the difference if I hold them up. Can you see the difference? And it's just that tiny little bit that um, I need to go back in and undo that and re-bind um, it off looser this time. But I thought, Scott pop. One thing. It's okay. So that's on my to-do list. And then while I was while we're talking about knitting, I have finished off um another, like I say, another couple of jumpers. The first one is by Sari Nordland and it's called the Kutar T K U U T A R T, which is, and it is blocked, but I haven't finished sewing the ends in yet because I tend to block it first, then sew my ends in rather than the other way around. And it is this one. There we go, just a little summer tea. Really pleased with that. I love doing lace work. Um, and it wasn't too too difficult as long as you as long as you mark out the sections so each section put um, a stitch marker in and then you'll know if you've made any mistakes as you go along you can correct it fairly easily and it's all the way around the yoke this I have made in a yarn that I haven't made I haven't used before that I got from tangled yarn and it is the, it's Lang Yarns and it's called C, 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 Cell, not C Shell, C Cell, I think it is. Um, pretty sure it's that. And it's really, really lovely. It's a cotton merino mix. In fact, hang on a second and I'll pull it up and I'll tell you a bit about it. Right, I'm going to read it off here so I don't get it wrong. It's Lang Yarn Oceana. C, C cell and it's a 70% cotton 30% viscose it gives it a really really lovely drape and a shine to it it's a DK uh, £5.50 a ball and it's 140 metres in length beautiful to knit with absolutely beautiful so much so I might have bought some more in a pink. And I thought, I saw a couple of weeks ago, someone had made the Whitmore with short sleeves in a pink. And I'm sorely tempted to make that one in this yarn. But yeah, I'm really, really pleased with it. So that's that one. And then my last one that I finished, this is not blocked. The ends aren't sewn in, but I've just thought I'd grab it. And I have made this pattern three times now, and it's the Tolster Tea by Rebecca Clo, who's the Craya Bayer. I have made, this was my first one. This is so soft, I love this one. Absolutely love that. 
and this was made from just scraps, scraps of four ply and the um, band in the middle that separates them all is mohair held double. And I just got, and it's, was it 10 grams possibly? There's 10 rows in each colour and then four rows of the mohair. Is it 10 or 12? One, two, three. I'm doing this without glasses. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Twelve rows. I fibbed. Twelve rows in colour and four rows of mohair. And like I say, I just use scraps of yarn. Laid it out on the floor. If I've got a picture, I'll find it. Laid it out on the floor in the colours that I thought I wanted to use. And really enjoy it. and it knitted up so quickly because I think it, with its striped jumper you're, you're wanting to get onto the next colour so it, it came together really really quickly. So that was the first one. The second one I made, I made and it was for Amy and it was made, I made it in a boucle and a mohair and again I striped it and I made long sleeves. Now Rebecca is making some adjustments to the pattern to include a long sleeve version and I think she's got some new ones that are coming out in the summer, which are tank top versions and a vest. So it's a really, it's, the pattern itself is so versatile and I really love it. But I just extended with that one. All I did was I extended the sleeve, didn't increase or decrease, um, which made it slightly balloon and then just decreased at the cuff and put um, the ribbing on the bottom. This is the, the latest one I've made which is, this is made in Knitting for Olive. The colour is Ballerina. And this yarn I had already knit up in another pattern. Didn't like it. It was too big. So I washed it, popped it in the tumble dryer. And if you kept checking it, just to shrink it down a bit, it, that worked. But then when I actually tried it on afterwards, I thought, I'm not keen on it. So I ripped it out and the yarn was all spiralled, so I washed it again, re-dried it and re um, reballed it. And it's amazing, absolutely amazing. Like I say, this needs washing and blocking, but you can see just a little. With the eyelets, so I did it every 10th row this time round and I did knit three, knit two together, uh, sorry, knit, knit three, yarn over, knit two together, knit three, yarn over, knit two together and that made the little eyelets. There we go. I've just got some little short sleeves. Yeah, nice little summer t-shirt. So that's it. That's it in, in terms of making. So I think I've done quite well these last couple of weeks. Plans wise, I've got another Shelby on the, on the go, which you might be able to spot there in that blue. And I have actually cut out that skirt again. In, I'll show you or wait until next week. I'll show you. In this fabric. Nice little white top to go with it, you know. What do we think? I think that's quite nice. So that's in terms of what I've got planned for sewing. Um, knitting, I have got another few things on the go, but we'll not talk about that. So I thought I'd give you a little bit of an update now on what we've been up to for the past two weeks. Um, and put some pictures in. So two weeks ago on the Friday, uh, Andrew and I went into St Ives. It was an absolutely beautiful day. I'd finished work. He said, should we go into St Ives and have a pizza on the beach? I said, yeah, that would be amazing. So we went in on his motorbike, um, which was fun, and went for a beautiful evening on the beach, sat on Porth Mir Beach, had, um, and they do freshly made pizza that you can just sit on the beach. You have to watch for the seagulls. But uh, we sat on Porthmere and had some pizza and a beer and then came home and then went to bed, 
And then the following morning, we woke up to find out that there had been the most amazing um, spectacle of Northern Lights over most of the UK. Mum was sending me pictures. My sister was sending me pictures. There were pictures all over Facebook. And I was gutted. We missed it. I will pop some pictures in taken by my sister and some of the pictures that were shown on Facebook over St Ives that just looked incredible, absolutely incredible. So it got to the Saturday, the following day, and Andrew had said, there's a possibility that they might be appearing again tonight. Do you want to go and try? So I, yes, 100%. So half past 11, we shoot off in the car down to the local beach. Well, the world and his wife were down there um, along with us. So we tried to go further up. Uh, so that was in that was in Hale. We went down to Hale. So we thought we could look over towards St Ives. So we went up to Gwydion Beach. And again, it was, I've never seen so many people about, but it's a great atmosphere. Um, I will pop a picture in of what we saw here. Absolutely nothing. <laughs> So we're now on Aurora Bora Borealis watch. I, there was a he, Andrew said to me last night. I think it was there was a possibility there was a red peak showing, um, and then it disappeared. But according to the news yesterday, there's a possibility that in two weeks' time it might be visible again. So we'll be doing another dash. I think at um, half past eleven to see if we can go and see it. So yeah, I'm really gutted that we missed it though. So that was that. And then Amy's been away. Amy's been to Mallorca with G, who is, I call my daughter number two, who is Amy's best friend. They went to New Zealand together. Uh, they lived together for a while and she is daughter number two. You may have spotted her. She's, she does make an appearance on one of the Vlogmases somewhere. Um, but they've been off to Mallorca together and had an absolutely amazing time. But other than that, I think that's, I don't think I've got anything else that we've particularly done. Let me check. I've written notes because you know what menopause brain is like. Um, did we do anything else other than going to the beach? Um, no. No. Sewing bees back on Tuesday. So we've got that to look forward to. I have mixed feelings about the sewing bee. Um, I will watch it. But I think I've probably said it before. Some of the time frames that they give them to construct something, it can't be finished properly. But that's just me. Um, I know it's a competition. But yeah, but I'll watch it and I'll get dragged into all, all everything that goes along with that. So, right, I'm going to go and try and take some pictures in the sunshine. Fingers crossed it works. But if not, I'll have shown you anyway. God, what do I have waffle, don't I? Right, I'll catch you again soon. Thank you all for your lovely comments as always and see you again, hopefully, in a couple of weeks. Bye. And just finally, our internet has been upgraded to fibre. So I am hoping that this will upload faster than 22 hours. It better do. Right, bye.